Alright, so it all goes down around the tugfort of the Big Sandy River, which runs right between Kentucky and West Virginia. On one side you have the Hatfield family, led by their patriarch Anderson Hatfield, and on the other, the McCoys, led by Randolph McCoy. It all started during the middle of the American Civil War. Both families mostly supported the Confederacy, except one McCoy, Asa, decides to enlist into the Union Army. During the war, he shoots and injures a close friend of Anderson Hatfield, which doesn't exactly make for a good first family impression. A couple years later in 1865, Asa is returning home from the war when he is ambushed and killed by Confederate militia. Although they lack evidence, the McCoys strongly believe the culprit was one of Anderson's uncles and thus swear revenge for Asa's murder. Tensions between the two families would flare up again in 1878, when Randolph McCoy gets into an argument with one of the Hatfields, Floyd, over ownership of a pig. Floyd was like, nuh uh, we had it first so it's ours, to which Randolph responded, Look, you see that mark on the pig's ear? Well that's my mark, so clearly it belongs to me. So Floyd replied with, oh yeah, well let's just see what the judge has to say about it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I can't do these voices. So they have a trial, but it turns out the judge is actually a cousin of the Hatfields, who unsurprisingly declares that the pig belongs to Floyd. The deciding testimony came from one Bill Statton, who claims that the pig did originally belong to Floyd, much to the McCoy's anger. Two years later, Statton was beaten to death by two McCoys as revenge for his testimony, which might have been a slight overreaction. Ah, uh, but what would a family feud be without a star-crossed romance thrown in? Not long after Staten was killed, Randolph McCoy's daughter, Rosanna, encountered and fell in love with Anderson Hatfield's son, Johns. Talk about being a destined pair. Although both their fathers forbade them from seeing each other, Johns and Rosanna continued carrying out the forbidden love story behind their family's backs. This eventually led to Johns getting caught on McCoy land and subsequently taken prisoner by the family. Rosanna ran off to alert the Hatfields, who immediately dispatched a rescue party. Once they arrived, the McCoys realized they were outgunned and were left with no choice but to let Johns go, thus reuniting the two lovers. However, despite Rosanna betraying her own family to save him, Johns ultimately dumped her when she ended up pregnant and instead married her cousin Nancy. Ah, young love, a tale as old as time. But the wild times didn't end there. On election day in 1882, three good old McCoy boys, Farmer, Tolbert, and Bud, encountered a drunken Ellison Hatfield, a brother of Anderson. The group got into a heated argument, which quickly descended into a fistfight, which resulted in the McCoys repeatedly stabbing Ellison and then finishing him off with a gunshot. Jesus. The three McCoys were immediately arrested by local constables, who began escorting them to a nearby jail. However, once the news of Ellison's death reached the Hatfields, they intercepted the constables and proceeded to tie the three McCoys to bushes and, to paraphrase the police report on the incident, riddled their bodies with no less than 50 bullets until they dropped dead. Um, yeah, neither side was really in the right during this. Following this event, the McCoy family turned toward local law enforcement in order to finally arrest the Hatfields once and for all. Unfortunately, when the police failed to bring any Hatfields to justice, the McCoys decided to go one step further and placed a massive bounty on the entire Hatfield clan. After several years of his family having to deal with increased notoriety due to the bounty, Anderson Hatfield and his relatives began plotting what they hoped would be their final act of vengeance against the McCoys. On New Year's Eve, 1888, the Hatfields snuck onto McCoy land in the middle of the night, surrounded their cabin, and proceeded to open fire, eventually setting it ablaze. Yet despite this zealous attempt at overkill, most of the McCoys, including Randolph, were able to escape into the surrounding forest. Sadly, the night did not go without any casualties. Two of Randolph's children died in the shootout, and his wife suffered heavy injuries at the hands of the Hatfields. Although the Hatfields' goal that night was to end the feud in one fell swoop, it ended up only drawing in more attention to the conflict. When word of the massacre reached the governor of Kentucky, he sent out the state's own militia group to the area, including special officer and bounty hunter Frank Phillips. Phillips and his posse, including a few McCoys, tracked down and arrested several Hatfields before cornering Anderson Hatfield and several other family members in Grapevine Creek. But the Hatfields refused to surrender peacefully, and another firefight erupted between the two parties, finally ending in the capture of the Hatfields. Quick side note, this battle almost caused a war between the states of Kentucky and West Virginia, as West Virginia's governor believed the arrests were unlawful and resulted in violence on West Virginian soil. The governor even went so far as the Supreme Court over the incident, but was ultimately refuted. The final trial was held within Kentucky, and each of the captured Hatfields were deemed guilty and sentenced to life in prison. One relative, Ellison Mounts, confessed to the killings of Randolph's children and was subsequently publicly executed by hanging. 
Various legal trials would continue over the next several years, but eventually the feud faded and both families agreed to live in peace with one another. Since then, the Hatfield-McCoy feud has become another piece of American folklore. Today, the current members of both families have decided to embrace their ancestors' legacy, with appearances on Family Feud, joint efforts to maintain historic artifacts, and they even host public reunions between the two families. So yeah, that's pretty much it.